I uh, I found a gong up in Nevada City yesterday, so there's a nice store there called um, Inner Path, I think, um, connected with um, Self Realization Fellowship or Nanda Yogananda Group. I'll, I'm just gonna try it out for a second. <laughs> So there's a gong on the umze, so a little smaller. Um, part of my motivation is uh, for a little while there were gong wars. Um, gong wars with, is like, is, is it okay to take the gong off of Lama's table and use it you know, for other meditations? Or does it, have, it can it not be touched or something like that? So, that's kind of cellularly, right? So um, uh, gets its own gong. Although um, traditionally, if if they're ritual instruments, then those wouldn't be disturbed, right? Like that. But you know, we have to just kind of use our intelligence, right? I don't have any water or tea, so probably that's because I'm missing a, an attendant here today. So we'll see what happens. Because my voice is a little. Uh, uh, today. <clears throat> but here goes. You, you did not find these in um, Himalayan Buddhist temples. This is Chinese and Japanese. There's some people, but you know. Uh, there's another, this is a little harder. <laughs> it's got to be fun. It's, it has to be fun. <clears throat> Normally, we would also have a greeter at the door, you know, where somebody would say, Hey, welcome, just it's okay. Leave your shoes here. So uh, that's important. Yeah. Don't have that person today. Yeah. Patty's doing everything today. That's, that's good. Um, so I have one person, um, Matthew Dorji Kassong, you know, helping out, seeing. Facing this way, right? It's facing towards you guys to be helpful if something needs help. And then you know, that say, don't you call some meditation prayers? Attendance. Oh, I could use another water. It's okay too. Don't go away. Stop her. <laughs> She's gone away. Yeah, that's okay. Thanks. Uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that is. Okay. That's at the end. Go ahead. Seven line prayer of Guru Rinpoche. Om. <laughs> 
to Shakyamuni Buddha, teacher, bow destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, bow destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, thou destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, thou destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, thou destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings and go for refuge. When you chief of humans were born, you took seven steps on this great earth and you said, I am supreme in this world, to you who are wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate, endowed with the supreme marks, a face like a stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds who are not like you, who is free from dust, Matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, field of ocean-like merits and good qualities, to the thus gone I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue releases from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning, to the dharma that brings peace I prostrate. From freedom teaching the path, well abiding, well abiding in the pure, pure trainings, trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also I prostrate. Homage the Supreme Buddha, homage the Dharma refuge, homage the Great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage, to all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects. The Supreme Faith I pay homage. Do not commit any non virtuous action. Accumulate virtue and goodness, subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning, and clouds. Look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Do this merit, having attained the state of the all seeing and thereby subduing the enemy of faults. May I liberate migrators from the oceans of existence, stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge until I'm enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma, May I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. 
May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distant. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginning this time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas recommend and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jeweled mandala, together with other pure offerings and wealth, and the virtues that we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. Oh, oh my masters, my yidams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith. Accepting, accepting these, these out of your boundless compassion, please send forth waves of your blessings. Yeah. Idam, guru, ratna, mandala, kam, nirayatiyami. <clears throat> Part of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Blessed did I hear at one time the Bhagavan was dwelling on Mass Sultra's mountain on Rajagriha, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then, through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya Avalokiteshvara. How should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Sharivati Putra. Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty. Emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, Feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, <clears throat> likewise, all phenomena, all phenomena are emptiness, without, without characteristic, characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, stain. not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness. No eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element, and so on, and up to, and including no mind element, and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, and up to, and including no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awakened to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequal, the, un the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth, since it is not false. The mantra of perfection of wisdom is declared, kayata gate gate paragate parasangate bodhisoha, Repeat it 20 times on your own Stanley.
Ayata, Gate, Gate, Paragate, Paragate, Bodhisattva. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya Avukateshvara, saying, Well said, well said, the lineage. It is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom, just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharivadi Bhutra, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised at that spoken by the Bhagavan. Just perfect. Yeah, you have to do that too. To fulfill the needs of all beings at their various levels of understanding, we request that you turn the wheel of dharma, including the lesser, greater, common, and extraordinary approaches. Let's start by doing short meditation, shall we? Get to use the new gong.
If you left, welcome back for those that stayed. Actually, the, um, the heart sutra is the Dharma talk. Really, you shouldn't have to say anything, right? That's sutra, a Dharma talk, right? That's it. <laughs> Would that be okay? <laughs> you, you want more? <clears throat> Our church is very interesting. Um, it's uh, one of the main uh, commonalities in, in all of the Mahayana tradition that you find in um, India and Bhutan and Nepal and Tibet, um, China, Japan, uh, everywhere, Europe, Australia, like uh, Heart Sutra. And it's, um, it's Mayan and Tantric at the same time. We have we, in many sutras, for those who are scholars, um, you don't generally run into mantras, right? Like in Heart Sutra, run into long kind of Kind of long saying sudharanis, but uh, this is very explicitly saying mantra, right? Also, we explicitly have um, the homage to um, the noble Bhagavati, right? Bhagavati is, you know, sometimes lady, goddess lady, um, Parjana Paramita. So the wisdom mind is not just um, uh, clarity and knowing. Um, but can also take the form of uh, the Prashna Paramita Buddha. And, uh, I don't think we show that on the uh, overhead, right? We don't have the, do we have that? We don't have that, right? We just have text, we don't have that. Yeah, so maybe, um, maybe going forward, we can uh, have a picture of, um, picture of her, so. She's um, very beautiful and um, um, there are many in Indian hymns to um, the Bhagavati uh, Prashnaparamita composed in India. So um, we primarily here do, uh, uh, when I say Indo -Him Himalayan, so India went to, um, Himalayas and Tibetan Buddhism or Nepalese Buddhism or Bhutanese Buddhism is an um, uh, interesting mixture of uh, India and uh, the Himalayan regions. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I'm here to say something useful for people. Um, and what I'd like to emphasize is that um, the whole path is um, training um, to become natural. <laughs> so that's the paradox is that um, we have to uh, see the natural awareness and then we has also have to train and stabilize it. So. Um, it sounds odd, like American California style is be natural. What is that? <clears throat> Are we natural already? So, or then in California, maybe America we go, well, there's all this society overlay. And if I just don't go along with society's convention, then I'm natural. Well, the, the Buddha Dharma isn't quite that either. So, um, we do have uh, a normative statement. We are saying it is possible to, to be natural, to wake up to our way things really are. Uh, and not but, and it, uh, is that me? <laughs> Alarm is on. Hmm. Somebody wanted to make sure I said something. <laughs> what was it though? <laughs> So <clears throat> we train to be natural. And uh, the path, it, it takes a lot of structure um, 
to even start the training. So structure in this sense, uh, metaphors are the structures that I pick up. <clears throat> Um, then um, the active part of the structure is how to make and, or maybe harvest the tea and boil it and um, make the tea bag, everything like that uh, in a structure. <clears throat> so this is the, the outer and inner training. And then uh, the absolute uh, training and performance is ah. <laughs> there's a kid's book that I still have from my children um, called the, How the Czar Drinks Tea. So, um, uh, in one of the small villages, um, I think that the main character they're picking, um, like a ghetto vi village, you know, someone who's kind of outcast, Jewish village, and um, the, uh, I mean, maybe maybe like a pillar on the roof that's a milkman, you know, at least. <laughs> He's drinking his tea and the neighbors say, Petri, you look so happy drinking your tea. And he goes, yes, I drink the tea just, just like the czar drinks tea. And they go, don't say that, <laughs> don't say the czar. <laughs> but um, now I drink. They think he's an idiot, also. <clears throat> so, uh, this, it's a long story, of course, these wonderful long stories. Um, but the czar hears about this, right? And um, kind of pissed and intrigued at the same time. So, gets his guards or Cossacks to come round this guy up. Um, brings him to the Kremlin and <clears throat> she brings him forward and says, you know, this is important, you know, lying about what the czar does is punishable by death and build up, big drama build up and he says, uh, okay, show me how, you know, you're the same as the czar. So, Petya, I don't know if I'm saying it right in Russian, is that something right? Yeah, yeah. So then, uh, they bring out this big samovar and <laughs> they serve the czar and they serve Petya, the peasant, you know. So um, they do this. And both Petya and the czar. Oh. And the czar says, all right. You know, what, what's up? And Petit says, oh, we both say ah after we have tea. <laughs> so that's the natural world, you see. Petit, like, pointing. So one of our mantras in Dzogchen, of course, is ah. But, you know, when we say ah, you know, it sounds artificial when we say it. Um, sometimes during meditation or during retreat or some other practice, but it's, it's the same ah. Uh, oh. So but we have to create the situation and the context to uh, really kind of appreciate uh, I don't know if we need to go to the Kremlin. I don't want to go right now. But, uh, <laughs> but that's that's the idea of this naturalness that uh, we all have that same, but we have to create the structure to see it. So of course, Petya was um, at Point Bazaar's guru, right? 
<laughs> knowing the way things happen in Russia, even then, you know, probably just got sent back to the village and, you know, there's a gold, you know, still was poor, but, you know, at least he didn't get arrested, right? But, so uh, that, so we, uh, actual naturalness, um, but to actually experience the awe, uh, we actually have to create a context. We have to have the teacup and do the tea and create a little bit of ritual usually. And then now we can say, uh, we can realize in the moment just ah, but usually um, we're saying ah or sighing and it's, it's enwrapped in some kind of sorrow or you know, something like that, uh, instead of the, the awe of satisfaction and fulfillment and completion, you know, usually doesn't have the awareness around it. So even though, in a sense, it's, it's natural, we're not seeing the naturalness, we're not appreciating it. <laughs> there are these extraordinary um, teachers uh, that are now also sometimes natural teachers doesn't have to be part of you know, the formal training all the time. People like Petya. So um, when, when I was hanging out a little bit with Leonard Cohen, he, he'd tell these kind of stories to you know, kind, of, kind of Zen Hasidic stories, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's part of the context of Tantra is to tell a story um, so that we get the context. So um, a Heart Sutra is not just saying uh, form is emptiness, feelings are emptiness, or just saying Prajna Paramita, but of course is uh, telling story. So that's important. Um, we have different levels of stories. Uh, Heart Sutra is, is, is a very compact and interesting story, a way to present this word. But in this case, instead of, um, you know, saying, ah, you know, Avada Kiteshvara was suggesting, oh, let's do Ayatagatigati Paragati Paksamati. So, ah. So that's a long, that's a long aha. <laughs> so maybe we can um, have some uh, questions, comments, and complaints. Interested. <laughs> okay. What is currently your favorite line in Heart Sutra? Oh, that's a good one. So I'm going to have to see because <clears throat> uh, well, it changes, but um, uh, I, I, I like that. Uh, that it, it ends in kind of a party. <laughs> Sometimes it ends kind of serious. I was driving yesterday listening to NPR, I don't know, not NPR, I don't know, serious. And they were playing the entire um, Cosby of Romeo and Juliet, um, Valley Suite, and there was a little history. Apparently Prokofiev first uh, wrote a kind of revision, which I like, by the way, and here it was so that at the end, um, uh, the priest, I can't remember his name, but uh, he, you know, he stops, he stops Romeo long enough or gets a knife from Romeo. And then by that time, um, Juliet has woken up, you know, from the, you know, the sleeping thing like that. And uh, then the last part of the ballet was then they dance and they live happily ever after. But apparently when that was submitted to 
the Revolutionary Committee, they yeah, mixed it. <laughs> so um, uh, I like that this story generally, um, uh, Sutra and Tantra stories uh, generally um, end in a meal. Um, you know, Tantra word, we say Gana Chakra, circle offering, something like that. So it ends in a party. I do also like, you know, that um, Chen Rezi corrects Shariputra, who's always is kind of a little bit of that fall guy, you know, so the son or daughter of the lineage. So it's an um, important um, Mahayana uh, distinction there, because Shariputra is generally representing very strict um, style. And uh, I'll make it just for the question about the Southern Mahayana tradition. Yep. Hmm. Hey. You're supposed to have the microphone for. you expand on the word natural as used in lesson? What does natural look like? That's a really good question. <laughs> but that, that, um, that could be like Oh. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so when we use words, we, we realize we use concepts a little bit, right? So we realize that the words are hopefully healing fictions instead of um, dysfunctional fictions. So healing fiction is natural from um, Mahamudra's of Champani would be like, um, unfabricated. So sometimes we could say spontaneous, but a lot of times when we say spontaneous, of course it could mean impulsive. But, um, when, when you're looking at natural, it's, it's uh, unfabricated like that. So, you know, it sounds, you know, and when I was receiving Mahamudra teachings directly, <laughs> the teacher, teacher, my teacher would just say, "Don't, don't make anything." What you know? So, I mean, don't make anything about what I'm making it about. You know, so just don't make anything. It's difficult, I think, in a sense, right? So uh, part of the context is we have to create our context where we catch ourselves in the act of being ourselves or we give permission or create enough trust where others catch us in the act of being ourselves. You know, And sometimes that's abrupt and sometimes it's very kind. It could be, you're doing that again, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes our, our best teachers are people we know intimately that will say, hey, you, you're doing that again. Well, <laughs> so um, the natural part is not uh, always the, the repetitive thing, the, the natural part when someone says, oh, you're doing that again, and then something pops up. And when we've done enough training and practice, when someone says, whether I like what you're doing or pointing out either a positive or a negative, then th there's kind of a recognition in nature of mind. 
So generally, um, uh, pointing out the natural mind, um, uh, you know, doesn't always happen during a formal meditation session. So very famous is some people in the audience already know, like um, uh, Patrol Remshe, um, wonderful teacher from a century ago, trained very, very hard with his teacher, Do Kensei, um, lots of meditation, of course, lots of hardships and obeying ridiculous commands and so forth. And then I think this is in words of uh, a perfect teacher. I don't know. Check with my scholar. Is that is that right, Dirk? Is in words of perfect my teacher? You tell me. So I believe that's in words of my perfect teacher. Yeah. So I think the story is from words of my perfect teacher, where they're they're just kind of sitting down or lying down there outside and. Um, looking at the stars or just, you know, I know what they were doing, probably just nothing, hanging out. And uh, she said, do you, do you hear the dogs barking? And Dr. Ramsey said, yes. And, uh, Bill said, that's it. Right then we had deep awakening. So, you know, if we were sitting just listening to the dogs without the training and preparation, there, there wouldn't be that awe experience because we hadn't created uh, the right uh, structure and context. But um, that moment, uh, you know, that Patra and Shea obviously had trained so much, uh, you know, that, uh, that natural, the natural mind came up for him. But it doesn't have to be like, um, <laughs> it doesn't have to be a little Zen trippy, like it always has to be some natural phenomena, right? You know, where you're listening, uh, listening to the sound of the pebble hit the bamboo or something like that, right? You know? So some of you perhaps have read a lot too many probably Zen Collins and stuff like that, right? But um, so it just could be, you know, it could be something like your partner says, you're doing it again. <laughs> or your teacher says, you're doing it again. Or that's it. And then there's an alternative answer. So the tendency, like after reading some of these stories, by the time I was reading Pato I was a little bit more mature, I, I would be running out listening to dogs. <laughs> barking, they have it, they have it. That's dogs barking, that's it, that's it. You know, so, <laughs> so that, that might, you know, we, we tend to do that. Like now the answer is dogs barking. That's, that's the natural world. And of course it is, but um, we have to recognize the natural mind. So there has, there's, there's, uh, there's a connection made at that time. So it doesn't have to be dogs barking. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, uh, both, uh, you know, I think both in the story, both Petya uh, and, and the czar, you know, I should have mentioned, and the czar had a good laugh, you see, like that. The, and laughter a lot of times is, you know, it, that kind of joke, and that's, that can be a very natural mind, you know. So they're just joined in the laughter. And, as I say, probably Petty still had to go back broke. I don't know. Maybe got a little medallion or something. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. Is this helpful? Yeah. You have to do a lot of, you know, there's, there's a lot of kind of wiping away of old patterns. There's a lot of dismantling that has to go on. You know, it's, it's like we have a really nice chest of drawers. <clears throat> I use this metaphor as one time I was given the task of taking paint off a chest of drawers and bringing it down to its natural wood. Has anybody ever done something like that? Really annoying, you know, because the paint gets in everything and, you know, it cracks. You know, so th there's a lot of work like that. 
that's uh, you know, kind of uh, character is you know cleaning up the, the gene stables, right? That's why these myths are so important in Milarepa's trials. It really seems sometimes like lamas are trying to punish us, <laughs> um, but um, that's the idea. So you know, you're, you're having to scrape away the paint or something to reveal the natural mind. <clears throat> People from out in virtual land can ask questions too, or talk up, I know. <clears throat> when people say nothing, that means traditionally everyone's got the point. There's no doubts. There's no doubts. It's all good, one more doubt. All right. Yes. If no one else has a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about um, the first paragraph after um, I prostrate to the Aria Triple Gem, lest I hear it one time. The gem. Just that I prostrate to the Aria Triple Gem. No, I was just the whole that's it. Just that first time. paragraph starting with us right here at one time. So that's context, you know. It, so uh, the teachings, uh, uh, the trainings are are generally always in a context. So you're you're always gonna have like take out. So that's why when really trying to do trainings, whether it's recovery or dharma or work, it, we have to actually be really specific. Like you're at a certain place at a certain time, right? So later when we do some Kala Chakra practice, I'll be emphasizing uh, right place, right time. It's Kalpa, Kalpa court. Kalpa means like time, pot, place. The right place, the right time. Are you in the right place at the right time? Yeah. So, uh, creating that context. So, this is definitely Mahayana Sutra because as monks uh, uh, implied, you know, saying, I think even in the sutta that uh, it would be bhikshus and bhikshunis and a great community of bodhisattvas, so a great community of bodhisattvas would entail um, uh, anybody that's taken the bodhisattva vow. So that could be human beings or animals or devas or strange creatures or the Pleiadians or something. So like, there's a lot, there's a lot there. And, um, what's interesting too, then the Bhagavan, that meaning the Buddha, uh, absorbed in the concentration uh, called profound perception. So that's interesting, like the Buddha's just, you know, and then it's um, you know, next to, <laughs> next to where we're there is uh, Avalokiteshvara um, uh, who's looking at the five skandhas and seeing and then you have another character introduced, you know, um, Shari Putra, then speaks up. So there's, thus did I hear, would be Ananda, and then the Buddha, and <clears throat> all the Shrius and Bhikshunis and Bodhisattvas, and then uh, all the Kiteshvaras practicing, and then Shari Kutra is inspired to ask a question. So that's why we like to have questions and answers. <clears throat> so, you know. <laughs> My teacher, Geshe Ratron, was very direct and would say, only stupid people don't ask questions. 
<laughs> so he was very patient when when people would ask a question. But would not be would not be patient when people just kept doing things without asking a question. Why are you doing that? You're doing it wrong. Why didn't you ask? So uh, the teachings and the trainings based on dialogue and the sutras are basically. But I know people just want to sit alone in their room and become enlightened and then go to their you know, 25th high school reunion and look enlightened, but that's not the way it works. <laughs> right. Follow up question. Um, this might be silly, but from what I know, this translation is really, really accurate. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering why is it why does it start with Ananda saying, thus did I hear at one time, and then proceed to go into the Bhagavan dwelling? There's nothing actually being said, but he hears it. And where he's, he's reporting it. He's, it. he's reporting. The idea is it's an oral lineage. So, so there's a bunch of people sitting around, and Ananda would be going, well, this is what happened. But it was, you know, we were at Vulture Peak. Some people here may have been to Vulture Peak or yeah, some people. Maybe Susan, did you go to Vulture Peak? Yeah. Vulture Peak. Yeah. 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 Little video. <laughs> yeah. How did everybody fit in there? <laughs> That's Mahayana. Like they're all here. You may not see them, but you know. So in therapy, we always say this more always more than two in bed, you know. Yeah, so uh, like when, um, when teachers would give Heart Sutra talks in a scholastic way, like each, each sentence would be broken down. I mean, we'd start with, uh, we'd start with the title this for you know, scholastics. Like, so I've been at talks where, uh, not here, but you know, other places, tradition, like the teacher would go, okay, I'm gonna give a teaching on the Heart Sutra. Great. And then they go, okay, Arya Bhagavati Prasha Paramita Vidaya Sutra. And then that would be the whole talk. Or have the talk would be Arya. Noble. Okay, you gotta get that. No, what what is it to be real noble? You know? So the whole thing would be the title. So traditionally, actually, everything's contained in the title. If you get the title, you got it. We like to hear more of the story, though, generally, don't we? So, so traditional texts, the homage and the title are extremely important for the setting. <clears throat> Mama, I would like to uh, correct myself. Uh, the uh, That story, I, it's not in words of my perfect teacher. I looked, I checked oh. it. Good. And I realized where I heard this, where I read the story, I actually read the story in Sogyal Rinpoche's Tibetan book of living and dying. Ah. And he tells the story not of being so, uh, not of being Patra Rinpoche and uh, Do Chense, but of being Patra Rinpoche as being the teacher of Nyosho Lungtok. Oh, okay. And that the two of them are lying there. Uh, <laughs> And they, he says, do you hear the dogs? Actually, I can, the passage here, uh, he says, uh, Patro Rinpoche was lying stretched on the ground doing a special Dzogchen practice. He called Nesha Lung took over to him saying, did you say that you do not know the essence of the mind? Nyosha Lung took guessed from his tone that this was a special moment and nodded expectantly. There's nothing to it really, Patro Rinpoche said casually and added, my son, come and lie down over here. Be like your old father. Nyosha Lung took stretched out by his side. Then Patra Rinpoche asked him, do you see the stars up there in the sky? Yes. Do you hear the dogs barking in the Dzogchen Monastery? Yes. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Yes. Well, the nature of mind, well, the nature of Dzogchen is this, simply this. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah like that thank you so much <clears throat> well it was bothering me because i'm like 
Did I really read that in Words of My Perfect Teacher? It's hard to remember where things come from sometimes. <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, what's interesting about um, uh, studying closely with teachers, um, you know, it, it's good to have like, okay, I'm also interested in the textual, but, you know, different teachers I've heard different ways, you know? So it's just like family, you know? So you're just kind of, yeah, Uncle da, da da used to do this. And you go, no, that was not Uncle da da, da that was cousin, so there's a, like that. But uh, um, so people make uh, their embellishment. But, you know, uh, thank you for, you know, directing us. Yeah, so. Um, uh, you know, I, when we read it, you know, we kind of hope to like, okay, do, are we going to get something too, just from reading it, you know? So that, that's, that's important too, because even though um, we may not see the moon, at least, okay, we've located the finger, right? So like, just follow. <laughs> so we may not immediately see the moon when we see the finger, but at least, okay, we, we got some pointers like that. Thanks, Dirk. Perfect. Oh, well, one further, I'm sorry, but one further thing on that. It turns out that it was actually quoted by Tukutunda in Buddha mind. That, that appears to be the original source of the story in print. Doesn't mean that other teachers haven't done other things, but. <laughs> So what's the difference between natural and genuine? Is there a difference? I hear Well, when you say genuine, like. The we're natural. using natural for that kind of Dzogchen style, natural mind. Then is there like, so that has a certain contextual meaning. Then when you say genuine, then the context for that, the language context is what? To be a genuine person, <clears throat> to be a natural person, to behave in a genuine, unfabricated way, to behave in a natural, unfabricated way. Yeah, so that's a good point. So, and um, English translation of Tibetan Dzogchen. So, yeah, so, yeah, so we'd call that conduct. Okay, so sometimes, sometimes we just say view, meditation, action, but then uh, sometimes we expand that a little bit to say view, meditation, action, and conduct. So, you know, overall, um, as you know, I'll, I'll have to ask Morris, but there's a sense of mensch there. Would that be the right term? Somebody's really just totally. Yeah, but let's say someone's conduct is totally genuine and upfront and it'd be a mensch, right? No, conduct would be actually how they are. They're how they are, right? Yeah. I'm asking my local Yiddish expert. So con conduct is, I thought the conduct was like a conscious uh, deportment. Like Not I'm, conscious I'm at this point. The right That's way. just your, how you're doing your life, totally. Action would be a little bit, action in this sense would be a little bit uh, maybe intentional. Conduct is, is like the whole, like that's just. But natural is, is un, conduct, unintended, un, un, unstudied. Yeah. Conduct would be unfabricated. So it's, it's directly from original nature. Yeah, direct, otherwise. Yeah. So I'm asking, would that be a mensch? Yeah. A mensch, I think, would be would be a conscious 
to conscious. conscious. To conscious. Okay. Like I, this is the right way. This is the right way. Okay. Yeah. Still, it's good to be. Yeah, that way. Contact. Yeah, action is important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting to see the overall. Try, try to look at it overall, right? It's hard to know, like um, when we're, uh, when we're on the mountain, uh, or deep relationship with ourselves or with someone else. It, it's it's sometimes you don't you know you don't see the mountain right because you're so close. So sometimes after someone's passed, um, then we, from a distance we we really see you know what kind of mountain they were. Hopefully, you know, then there's a deep appreciation. We haven't screwed things up too much. Or it could be like the Joni Mitchell song. Don't know what we've got till we've lost it. How does it go? Till it's gone, paid paradise, put up a parking lot. Ooh, I don't know, no. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Good questions. Maybe we should close here. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful chenrezin tenzin yato, please remain until samsara ends. <clears throat> may the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Low song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones. Merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Mars. Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of snowy land sages. Losang Drakpa, I make the request at your holy feet. Okay. So uh, next Sunday, uh, um, Tenzin Chunky will be here giving a talk. Um, it'll be part of the uh, workshop that um, she's wanted to limit it to a certain size for different reasons. So uh, I think it's still, it's all filled, right, Susan? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so I'm going to point people in your direction, okay. Um, uh, General Tenzin is an old friend and um, uh, somebody I have a lot of uh, uh, confidence in to um, you know, present and uh, transmit Dharma. So, um, and I have a personal aspiration that you know, we see more of her <laughs> here. Uh, you know, I want to. Um, uh, Want to promote her? I, I want to promote good teachers, you know. But also, it, it sometimes does take, uh, you know, affirmative action, you know, to say, okay, we have to, you know, generally, female teachers have a harder time, totally different, harder time in Asia. That's a very famous. So even in America, you know, so I want to really support her to do that, and then. Um, Kind of breaking news is Councilor uh, Ramshe um, will be here uh, August 20th and 21st um, to give some teachings um, on the 
six dharmas of Naropa, six sometimes collectively called six yogas. Chudrak uh, actually is Naro's Dharma six. <laughs> so, um, these are important um, inner yoga practices, um, Tara Tantra yoga practices, and we'll be giving a general uh, introduction. And he's very good at that. So, um, you know, I, I kind of hit it off with Rinpoche, so <laughs> put it that way. So, uh, he's very uh, ecumenical, has training in both Gelug and Nyingma uh, styles of practice, and um, very uh, energetic, so I appreciate that. So that's that's an August, and we'll be letting people know more about that. So, uh, la la. Yes. So, um, like you heard about this amazing teacher coming uh, next Sunday, Venerable Chokey. She's just such a warm person and so approachable. And then on Friday we have this uh, ongoing. Um, once a month event called Expressions, and it's poetry, music, and art, and um, it's just an amazing thing to be a part of. Every time I go to it, I just I I just feel so embraced by the whole room. And so, um, if you're able to come to that, it's for everyone. We always emphasize that everyone with everything we do here, and um, and we have a kind of like a little potluck, but it's more like bring an hors d'oeuvre or something like that. We have a little break in between. And then uh, the last thing, so that, that starts at six o'clock and then in the future we'll start it at seven, but next Friday at six. And then, um, and some of you were here for some meditation that we had previously, so you've already heard me talk about our AC. But for those of you that weren't here, we wanna keep our room super comfortable, our whole temple for all of our guests. And we need your help to do that and to support the teachers that are coming our direction. So we have, we sponsor teachers to come and, and uh, we want them to have everything they need while they're here. So thank you so much. Super. So I think we will adjourn and then some people will stay for snacks, right? Lunch. Thank you so much. Ciao. <laughs> there she is. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, very colorful. Yeah. Yeah, super. Thanks for doing that. That's just right. Yeah. Pajna Paramita. <laughs>